Welcome students. In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through carrying out experiment P17 on your lab manual. This is the classification and the analysis of anions. Before, we have studied a lot about cations. And so this time we're gonna give the anions equal opportunity. If you go to your uh, lab manual, you'll see experiment P17, qualitative analysis of common anions. This lab is different from the ones we did before because in the cation analysis, we typically did a sequential analysis. In other words, we started with a mixture. We would add a precipitating agent. We would separate the precipitate from the supernatant. And then we would continue treating those in sequence with other precipitating agents. In this case, we don't do it that way. In this case, we do all the tests, pretty much all of them, with the initial mixture. Now, the difference here is that with anions, uh, we are going to have like three different classification reactions, and then we will go back and we will look at the confirmations. I'm going to let you take a uh, time to go through all these reactions here. They explain everything pretty much we're going to do, but I am going to actually go ahead and let's look at what the anions are and what we're going to be doing with them. Okay, so we're gonna go there now. We are obviously not gonna be studying all of the anions. We have a specific set of them and I have them all here, chloride ions, bromide, iodide, carbonate, nitrite, sulfite, phosphate, sulfate, and nitrate ions. All of these, when we start the test, are all gonna be in solution in water. They'll be uh, solubilized in water. And the way we do it is we're gonna do three different classification reactions. We're gonna classify these into groups depending on how they respond to these different treatments. So the first classification is a reaction against silver nitrate. And all of us recognize the action of silver ions with chlorides, bromides, and iodides, right? So essentially what's going to happen is that these guys here, and actually I'm going to include in there the carbonate ion. I'm going to square these off over here. These four guys are going to give me a reaction versus silver nitrate. And what it, that is, is they will form a precipitate. Of course, the precipitates are silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide, and silver carbonate. It's very difficult to tell these apart just by their colors. And so there are several things that we're gonna have to do to you know, check them out. Uh, as we'll see in a moment, there is a way that we can separate the carbonate ions out of there. Now, uh, in some cases, you might get the phosphate to actually also react there. So be wary of that because you could get technically the phosphate to work in this particular reaction and give us a silver phosphate precipitate. I see it happen sometimes, sometimes it doesn't happen, or maybe sometimes, uh, depending on the acidity of the environment, you might not even see it. So a lot of it depends on how the stock room has prepared our uh, compounds here. That All of these, by the way, all of these, you're not gonna obtain them in solution, as we'll see later in the experiment, you will obtain all of these in solid forms. They're all gonna be sodium salts. And so you'll have to dissolve them in water to get to this step, okay? Now, our second challenge test is against acid. 
and we're going to use sulfuric acid in this case. And in this group, we're going to have several of these guys here. We're actually going to have the carbonate, the nitrite, and the sulfite ions. I don't know if you can see that over there. Yeah, I guess you can see that marker there. Okay. And all of these essentially in the presence of sulfuric acid are going to give us the production of a gas. So these will produce a gas, which you can observe because it creates bubbling in your solution. Now, again, I want you to go back to the lab manual and check the reactions uh, so you can see how the products are generated. But the carbonate ion is going to give us carbon dioxide gas. The nitrite ion is going to give us nitrogen monoxide. I'm sorry, dioxide. And the sulfite ion is going to give us sulfur dioxide. Those are the products we're going to get from here. The difference between these three products is that carbon dioxide is colorless and it's also odorless. Nitrogen dioxide has a sort of like a brown color. Sometimes it might look orangey depending on how the light hits it. Uh, nitrogen dioxide, of course, is one of the components of what we call smog due to uh, all of the products of different combustions and procedures from industries. And sulfur dioxide has a strong, rather annoying kind of smell. And so you will have to uh, develop some skills here in doing this lab. One of them is to be on the lookout for these faint brownish color of the nitrogen dioxide. And you also have to practice your skills as to how do you detect smells being produced by a chemical reaction uh, with all safety concerns into account. Okay, the third group that we're going to have here is going to be uh, the reaction against barium chloride. And in this group, we're going to have several guys here in the barium chloride group. So we're going to have the uh, all the way from here, from the sulfate through the phosphate through the sulfite. And actually, we are going to kind of wrap around here and actually get into the carbonate. We're going to skip the nitrite ion in there. Okay. So this is the group that is classified very based on the reactions against barium chloride. We had started out with the silver nitrate group. And then we had talked about the ones that produce a gas in the presence of sulfuric acid. In this case, what we're going to have is we're going to have several barium precipitates. All right, so let's put them here in order. Let's start out with the barium carbonate. Let's list out the barium sulfite. Let's do the barium phosphate. And then finally, the barium sulfate. So these four anions will precipitate in the presence of barium ions. Once more, what kind of precipitate you get is not going to be that detectable based on colors. But there is a second step we can take, and that starts us into the process of confirmations. Now, what you do here is some of the things you're going to do here are going to be done as a second step to the classification reaction. Sometimes to confirm the ion, you'll go back to the original sample and redo as a separate procedure the confirmation reaction. But we're going to start here with some partial confirmations here. So this is going to be a partial confirmation. 
and that is that in the presence of acid, we're going to add nitric acid here. What is going to happen is that neither of the halide, the silver halides here, are going to react. So no reaction here. But if it's the carbonate ion, it's going to dissolve. Not only is it going to dissolve, but Remember that the carbonate ion in the presence of acid gave us CO2. So you're also going to get production of CO2. With the silver phosphate, I'm sorry, phosphate in the presence of acid, it's also going to dissolve. So basically, out of the five possible anions that give you a precipitate with silver nitrate, you can identify separate between two sets, the ones that will dissolve in the presence of acid and the ones that will not dissolve. Like I said, this is a partial or preliminary confirmation because we're going to have to go back and test these guys. Plus, remember that the uh, carbonate ion will also produce a gas in the presence of sulfuric acid, whereas the phosphate ion doesn't. They both are going to produce barium precipitates. So we're going to do also here a confirmation. Again, let's call it a partial confirmation of these ions. Uh, similarly, again, we are going to react them with acid. And we're going to do that, and we're going to be able to distinguish between some of them in this group. In the presence of acid, the barium carbonate will, of course, dissolve. And of course, we know that it produces that carbon dioxide gas. The barium sulfite will also dissolve. And we know that once the sulfite ion is in acid, it will produce that strong smelling sulfur dioxide. The barium phosphate will also dissolve. And so therefore, the barium sulfate is the one that will not react. So therefore, if you have a substance, an anion that precipitates in the presence of barium ions, what you're going to have is it's going to be not dissolving if that anion was barium sulfate. So this is uh, our partial confirmation. All right. Notice that at this point, we have some subgroups. For example, amongst those anions that reacted with silver nitrate, we have one group that is acid insoluble, one group that is acid soluble. Amongst the anions that reacted with barium chloride to form barium precipitates, three of them are soluble in acid, one of them isn't. And you have the added advantage that for the barium carbonate and the barium sulfite, you do have a way of distinguishing when they dissolve depending on properties of the gas that is produced when they dissolve. Whereas the barium phosphate dissolves but doesn't produce a gas, so we are going to have to go back and confirm the presence of phosphate, all right? Oh, yes. We seem to have forgotten about one guy here, right? It looks like we've kind of neglected our friend here, the nitrate ion. Well, the reason why we haven't seen it is because it does not give you a reaction in any of these classification steps, okay? It doesn't do that. Therefore, nitrate is one that has to be detected purely by a special confirmation reaction. Okay, let's go back to our uh, lab manual and see how we're going to be doing these uh, activities here. Going back to our lab manual, uh, here on this page, they give you uh, the basic techniques. 
Remember, number one, all of these anions are going to be present in the form of salts of sodium, and therefore they're going to be solids. All of these reactions are carried out in your tiny, you know, three inch test tubes. And so what you need is just a very small sample. So in the lab, there will be carts in the front of the room, and there will be little bottles, plastic bottles that have the different uh, salts. You will bring in your spatula and grab just a tiny amount, kind of the size of a single grain of rice at the very tip of your spatula. You will put that into your test tube and then add the required amount of water, which is typically somewhere in the range of about 10 drops or something like that. And you can then stir to get it to dissolve. You can use a glass stirrer, or you can simply holding the test tube by the mouth, you can tap it in the bottom to generate a swirling motion that'll cause the solid to dissolve. Be careful in those activities where you have to detect the smell, particularly if you're looking for the sulfur dioxide product, remember that the way you do it is you put the sample a few inches away from your nose and then you, you know, wave your hand to waft vapors towards you. You can see here on figure three. Let's look at what your uh, possible classification reactions are going to yield so you can have a visual of them, all right? Let's go to our other uh, screen here. Let's see, here we go. Okay, so here is our screen and this is our classification reaction. And you can see them all here. I kind of zoomed in so you can see all of them. Let's shrink this just a tad. Okay, here we go. So this is your first reaction here on top. This is your silver nitrate classification. Remember, you took a little sample of your salt, dissolved it in water, and then added the silver nitrate. And you can see there on the left side, the four anions that give you a precipitate with silver. And also, as you can see on the right, so does the phosphate ion in this case. The one thing that's noticeable is that the silver phosphate precipitate is kind of yellowish or beige. We said that in order to do a preliminary or partial uh, confirmation here is that we're gonna add acid to this. We'll add nitric acid. And as you can see here on the left, neither the chloride nor bromide nor iodide precipitates of silver will dissolve, but the carbonate and the phosphate precipitates do redissolve. Okay, this is what the classification looks like for the gas producing group here. Here is on the left, the carbonate ions in the presence of sulfuric acid, nitrite in the presence of sulfuric acid, and sulfite in the presence of sulfuric acid. Notice that carbon, uh, the carbonate ion will produce carbon dioxide gas, which bubbles out, large bubbles, no color, no smell. The nitrite will produce smaller bubbles, but uh, if you put a piece of white paper behind the metal to detect a little trail of kind of brownish color in there. And in the case of the sulfite ion, again, you'll get small bubbles, but you'll have that acrid odor, that kind of very pungent smell. Again, remember, don't put your nose over the test tube, just keep it a few inches away from your nose and then waft vapors towards your nose. The third classification group was the one with barium chloride, remember? And as you can see, uh, the carbonate again forms a precipitate, the halides and nitrite don't, and then sulfite, sulfate, and phosphate, all of them form the precipitates. Notice that, notice that up to now, Neither the nitrate, the nitrate has not reacted against silver. It also does not react against sulfuric acid. And now it doesn't react with the barium chloride. Uh, the second step in the classification is that after you add acid to this precipitate on top, you can see where the carbonate precipitate dissolved, the phosphate 
also dissolved, but the sulfite and the sulfate did not totally dissolve. The sulfite is not as soluble here in this reaction. So that means that you had to go back and do a confirmation for it. In other words, you go back to your original sample and you make sure you've carried out this reaction here with the sulfuric acid and you've seen those bubbles and detected that gas, okay? So this is the way it works. And now what I wanna do is I wanna explain a little bit of how do the confirmation reactions work, okay? Okay, remember that in our classification step, we already identified three anions that give us silver precipitates that are insoluble in acid. That gives us therefore either chloride, bromide, or iodide. These are all halides. And the way we're gonna separate them is by their behavior when they become oxidized and dissolved in a non-polar solvent. So right now we have them, of course, dissolved in water. Remember that we are not working with the silver precipitate now. We're going back to the original source and we're redissolving a fresh sample of the sodium salt in water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat these with a mixture that has chlorine water in it. Yes, chlorine is not very soluble in water, but if you can get some of it in there, it's a powerful oxidizing agent. Now, of course, because it is chlorine, the chloride ions are not going to react, but the bromide ions are turned into aqueous bromine and the iodide ions into aqueous iodine. Both of these diatomic molecules are nonpolar, and so they should be soluble in a nonpolar solvent. In this case, we're gonna use hexane. And what should happen now is because you started with an aqueous phase and now you have a nonpolar phase, they are going to separate in the test tube into two phases. The top part will be the hexane phase and the bottom part will be the aqueous phase. So what you're gonna ask yourself is, what happens when these diatomic nonpolar species migrate into the hexane layer? Is there a change that happens? Well, let's go ahead and say that there's gonna be a color to observe. So you're gonna observe the color here. And I'll show you some in your handout, you'll see some pictures of what that looks like. So that is essentially the confirmation of the halides. Another one that's important is the confirmation of phosphate. The phosphate ion is gonna be confirmed by a reaction with a compound called ammonium molybdate. I'm gonna let you check in your lab manuals what the formula of that compound is and what the reaction looks like. But ultimately what happens is that when phosphate ions react with ammonium molybdate, and this is usually in an acidic environment, you get a very bright yellow precipitate that forms in here. It's essentially a complex of you know, phosphorus, ammonium ions, and the molybdate so again, you'll be able to observe that. Don't forget, this is a confirmation. In other words, you went back to your sodium phosphate salt 
redissolved that in water, made the solution acidic, and then you added this reagent and observed the formation of a yellow precipitate. Now, the other one that we had to deal with is nitrate. Remember that nitrate is the one anion that does not uh, respond to any of the three classification steps. And the reason is nitrate is, of course, the conjugate base of the very strong acid, nitric acid. And so it doesn't react too strongly. However, under the proper conditions in an acidic environment and with the proper prodding, we can have it act as an oxidizing agent. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our nitrate ions and we are going to put them in a, in a reaction mixture that has iron to sulfate. in an acidic uh, environment, all right? So this is going to be acidic. And by the way, we're going to go ahead and nuke it, so to speak. We're going to use concentrated sulfuric acid for this, not the dilute one that we used in the classification of the gas producing anions, but this will be concentrated H2SO4. And this will go probably so through a series of steps, but eventually what will happen is that you will get that nitrogen dioxide gas that has that brown color. Somewhere in between, you might also see a, I'm gonna call it a browning of the solution itself. And that's because the iron ions themselves go through some steps and produce some intermediates that have like a brown color. Once more, you start out with your classification reactions. All right. Once you have done the classifications, some of them include a secondary step, which is in itself a partial confirmation. You are left with some that you have to totally confirm. So you have to go back to the uh, chloride, bromide, and iodide ions. You have to go back to check the phosphate ions because both the phosphate and the carbonate give you acid soluble precipitates against silver and against barium. So you wanna make sure that you confirm them. And then of course, we had to deal with nitrate. These are the confirmation reactions here. Now let's go to our uh, handout here so you can see what these look like. So this is the uh, other handout that you have in your uh, Canvas assignment. You can see all of the confirmatory tests in here. On the left, you see the uh, reactions for the uh, halides. And on the right, you see the phosphate and the nitrate. Now let's go and zoom in so you can see them a little better. Notice what happens on the left side when you take your halide ions, you treat them with chlorinated water so that you can oxidize the bromide, bromine and the iodine, I'm sorry, the bromide and iodide into bromine and iodine. And then when you mix them with hexane, and it's very important when you do this step, you have to add the hexane to your aqueous mixture and then stir it you know, somewhat vigorously and then you have to let it sit, uh, stand still for you know, a couple of minutes so that the two layers have a chance to settle and the bromine and the iodine have a chance to redistribute themselves between the two layers. Notice that the chloride ions don't give you anything. The bromide ions resulted in a double layer, the top of which, which is the hexane layer, kind of like an orange, uh, you might get like an orange and amber color. A lot of it depends on the concentration of it. And then the iodine gives you a violet color on the, in the hexane layer on top. All right, so this is your confirmations for these three ions. As far as the phosphate is concerned, you can see it here on the left. Again, the bright yellow precipitate that is formed when you treat it with the ammonium molybdate. 
And then on the right, you can see the nitrate, both a positive and a negative test. The one in the middle here is the positive. You can see the bubbling. You can see the browning of the solution. And if you put a white piece of paper on the back, you might be able to see the brown gas escaping from there. If you have a negative, in other words, if nitrate was not present in, the, uh, in your unknown, then you get nothing over here. Uh, I know it looks a little bit yellowish, but that's because the iron sulfate as acid uh, itself might have a bit of a yellowish color to it, all right? So this is what you're going to be observing. Once more, we come back here to our uh, lab manual pages, and you will be following all of the uh, instructions here. Like I said, I've skipped showing you all of the different reactions. Again, notice that in this case, you start with a collection of separate salts of these things. In other words, this is not a mixture that you're going to separate. These are all individual salts. Each one of them is going to be tested individually. You take a tiny amount, like we said, in the tip of your spatula. You dissolve it in 10 drops of distilled water in a small tube, and then you'll add the precipitating reagents, whether it's silver nitrate, whether it's barium uh, chloride, or whether you're simply going to add acid to see if you get the bubbling, in other words, the production of gas. Then once you have decided that, for example, in the silver one, you'll have to add some nitric acid afterwards and see if they the precipitate dissolves or not. In the case of the barium precipitates, you'll also add some nitric acid and see which ones dissolve and if there's any gas being produced. Remember that then you'll have to go back and do the confirmatory reactions for halides, for carbonate, for nitrite, and maybe for sulfite ions, you might have to go nitrite. You don't really have to reconfirm, but definitely the halides, the uh, phosphate with the uh, ammonium molybdate test, and then the nitrate with the iron two sulfate and concentrated sulfuric acid solution. And what you'll do is you come here to your data sheet on page 74, and it is done in the form of a grid. So you're gonna first see what are your observations. So you'll look at that handout that I gave you with all the photos and basically write down your observations here. Do you get a precipitate, yes or no? If so, what is the color of the precipitate? In the case of uh, all of these guys for the acid test. We're only going to do the acid test on the carbonates, uh, nitrites, and sulfites. What is the appearance? What is the odor, uh, odor of the gas that's being produced? And then for the barium ones, you'll ask, you know, do you get a precipitate? Yes or no? Does the precipitate precip uh, dissolve with acid? And of course, what will happen is then you'll go to the confirmatory tests. And we're only really doing those with the halides, right? And you had to ask, answer, your, uh, answer this here. What is the color of the hexane layer, the top one? And then remember for uh, phosphate, do we have a precipitate with ammonium molybdate? And then for nitrate, do we have the production of a brown gas in the presence of iron two sulfate and concentrated sulfuric acid? Remember that some of these were sort of like preliminarily confirmed by adding the acid after the uh, barium chloride, such as the sulfate ion here, okay? Okay, so with that in mind, let's see what are we gonna do with our unknowns in this case, okay? So we're gonna talk about the unknowns now. So here we are, and here's how your unknown will work for this lab. Remember that this is not like the cation qualitative analysis where we did things in a sequence. In this case, you're gonna take samples for each one of the tests. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have your unknown in the form of a sodium salt. You're gonna dissolve it in water, and then you're gonna do all three of the classification reactions. Well, that means that you need 
either dissolve enough for three reactions or simply have three different test tubes, one for each. So the first classification reaction is against silver nitrate. And what you're asking is, do I get a precipitate or no? No precipitate or precipitate. So that means that I could have in here, what? It could have been chloride, bromide, iodide. It could have been carbonate and perhaps phosphate. Again, like I said, not always sure you're gonna get a reaction there, right? Well, you do a preliminary confirmation here by adding nitric acid and then you ask, Will it dissolve or not dissolve? If it dissolved, then it means that the anion must have been either carbonate or phosphate, right? If it didn't dissolve, then it means it was either chloride, bromide, or iodide ions. All right. Your second classification reaction was versus sulfuric acid. And then you ask, do I get you know, a gas or do I get no gas? No gas or gas. So if I got a gas, then that means that it must have been either originally carbonate or nitride or sulfite. But remember, I'm also checking for particulars here, like color and odor, so I can pin down if it's one of these three. If I don't have a gas in there, it means that most likely my uh, anion was not one of those three. And then the third classification reaction, of course, is against barium chloride. Once more, we're gonna ask, do I get a precipitate or not? So either I get no precipitate or I get a precipitate. If I had a precipitate, then that means that my potential ions were, again, carbonate, right, sulfite, phosphate or sulfate ions. And so to do a preliminary confirmation, I'm gonna have to, again, hit these guys with nitric acid and ask, does it dissolve or not dissolve? And remember that the one that doesn't dissolve that would be the sulfate ions originally. Remember that when you're asked which anion is in your sample, uh, the idea is to think there are these guys, not the products, in other words, not carbon dioxide product, not sulfur dioxide product, none of these things, okay? So these are the three classification reactions, and this is what you're gonna receive uh, in the form of your unknown. So just like in the previous labs, on your Canvas gradebook, you're gonna receive a note that will have an attached file, and in that attached file, you're gonna see some pictures, and you'll be able to tell, uh, based on the ones that we just saw right now, what does your unknown, unknown look like on the classification reactions? Now we're gonna make a change here with respect to the uh, data sheet for your unknown, all right? So basically what you're gonna have is you're gonna be given, hold on a second here. So this is a page for your unknowns. Okay, notice that in the original lab, 
what you would have done is you would have had to do all three classification tests, the silver, the acid, and the barium precipitation. And then based on those results, you would have had to do some confirmatory tests. We're not gonna give you these. So here's the change we're gonna do right here where it says uh, performed and observed results. We're gonna change that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask you to, once you look at your classification results, you are going to, based on that, propose a candidate here. Let me start over here. Okay, these are, could be what your unknown could be. And then what you'll do over here is instead of the ones you perform, you're gonna have some confirmatory tests. Uh, and let's say you're gonna say, these are gonna be confirmatory tests, uh, let's say proposed, proposed, and what are the expected results? Oops, sorry. So that is the difference that we're gonna have here. And the same applies to all three of these things here. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing for here. I think actually you only get one unknown. So you probably can just simply wave or forget about these other guys here. Or you may wanna use the whole space here for your confirmatory tests since uh, you may have to do that. And yes, please go in the lab manual and look up what is the chemical equation to support the confirmatory reaction that you're proposing here? Or if you have two of them, then what they would be. Okay, remember that silver means you add silver nitrate, do you get a precipitate or not? H plus means you add sulfuric acid, do you get gas produced or not? Ba plus two, that means you add barium chloride, do you get a precipitate or not? Everything after that classification test is actually confirmation. That includes testing whether these precipitates are soluble in acid or not, okay? So make sure that you keep that in mind and uh, your unknowns will have a collection of like a picture of test tubes uh, after these different steps. And then you can propose what your confirmatory test is and then put in here, what do you think could be your candidate or candidates? I think it may be that in some cases you can actually nail it down to one possible unknown. And in other cases, yeah, you might have more than one, okay? And that is essentially the activity for this. And uh, any other questions that you have, please uh, send me an email or put a message in Canvas or send me a text message. And uh, I am going to move forward. Like I'm gonna postpone the deadline for this lab since it's coming at you a little late. So hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks a lot, and I hope you have a great time. Please stay safe.